name's Melanie, and I live in Sandy, Utah with my husband and four children. And my oldest son is named Bruce, and he's 20 years old, and he happens to be transgender. What transgender means in our case is that um, he was born with a male brain in a female body, so he's always felt like he was male or a boy trapped in a female body. And he expressed that from the, his earliest remembrances, like from the time he could start talking when he was about two. He would say, oh, you're such a cute little girl or whatever, and he'd say, no, I'm a boy, I'm a boy. And he would insist that he was a boy, and we really thought, oh, that's kind of cute, you know, what a cute phase, and he'll grow out of it one day. And the years passed, and he just never grew out of it. He was just always very insistent that he was a boy. Um, we just really didn't have a name for it, or we just kept reassuring him that you're not a boy, you're a tomboy, you know. We had a lot of people come up to us and say, oh yeah, my daughter was just like that, you know. When my daughter was little, she was as tomboy as they could be, and now she's perfectly feminine, and, and you don't need to worry about it, and, and one day Bruce will grow up and decide that he wants to be a girl. Probably around second or third grade, the boys started giving him a hard time and saying, we don't want to be your friend, you know, you can't play here, you need to go over with the girls, and this kind of thing. Or if there was ever a time where the teacher would say, you know, I want you to draw yourself, give the kids an assignment that they would draw him themselves. Bruce would always draw himself as a boy and not as a girl. Even though I had him have longer hair, and at that time I was trying to make him wear more feminine clothes, um, but he always fought me on that. But anyways, he'd always draw himself as, as masculine. And what I believe the strongest research shows is that in utero, there's a time when the brain develops, and then there's a time when the genitals will develop. And so, if the brain, if it's all about hormones, and if there's hormones present to make a male brain, it will form a male brain. And when it came to develop the body, the rest of the body, it, it got the signal to make a female body. And so that's my personal belief on it, because when it came out to me, and things, I researched it, and that's kind of what I found to be the most true. And when he was growing up also, we tried to, you know, his school performance started suffering because of his social condition, you know. Because he was being alienated socially, he became very depressed, and his, his school performance took a nosedive, and so the school counselors got involved at that time. This was still in grade school. But they didn't know, or they didn't let me know, you know, what the condition was or anything. And I'd say, well, you know, he, he insists he's a boy. And they, they were still very, almost like, I kind of got the vibe that they just didn't want to cross that line and say, yeah, he's transgender, or yeah, you might want to look into that. I think they kind of wanted to keep the door open, like, oh, he'll grow out of it. That's what I got a lot from that. Don't worry about that. Kids at this age can be confused, and they'll grow out of it. Um, he went on into, uh, into junior high, and of course, with junior high comes, comes puberty. And that is really a hard time for transgender kids because up to that point, they're kind of convinced themselves that, you know, one day they're going to wake up in the right body. And a lot of kids pray and pray and pray, you know, please God, just make me right. You know, one day I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be changed. And when puberty hits, their body like totally betrays them because it transformed into the, the body that they definitely do not identify with. And a lot of ki transgender kids will even muta mutate their, or mutilate their own body by cutting or whatever. Lots of people throughout history have tried to fight it. They have tried to do behavioral therapies and all sorts of, you know, award the feminine behavior and punish the masculine behavior, and it does not work. The healthiest way that I believed to deal with this with my child, instead of trying to fight him all the time and saying, you're, you're a girl, you're a girl, you're a girl, deal with it. I knew that road would most likely lead to death, and I really do believe 
that he would have committed suicide if I, you know, we didn't embrace the fact that he is transgender and this is something he's born with and that you cannot change it or beat it out of a child. And so after Bruce was able to change his name and live full time as male and switch schools, um, he was like a new person. He was so much happier. He had friends, you know, of male and female friends, but mostly, you know, male friends like a typical boy would, and was able to have those relationships and those bonds, which I think is so important. Of course, it is to grow, you know, it's part of our development. And so he, he was able to, to finally have normalcy. So I know that sounds kind of odd, you know, because but that's his, his normalcy. And I believe that being transgender is just a variance on normal. You know, people, we, human beings come in all different forms and, and there's so much variance in all of us. And why would there not be variance in gender also? He has been a lot help, help, happier and healthier living as a man. And Bruce considers him to be, himself to be a straight trans male or straight male, meaning that his sexual preference is, is female. So, so he feels like he is straight and not gay. And that, you know, instead of being um, a female, he's a man. After you know he was able to transition and become full full time male, Bruce and I now we have a very close relationship. I think we always did, but it's even closer. You know that he feels so grateful that I'm his mother because I was able to support him, and I'm so grateful for the lessons he's taught me too. Because you know you learn a lot from having you know any child that's outside the box. You know. Um, but you wouldn't trade it for, for anything in the world when you look back, absolutely.